What's going on? It's your girl Mariah, you're now tuned into Survival Kid Business. Today is June the 23rd, 2022. Y'all know how we do it every Thursday, 6 p.m. New episodes drop. So thanks to all the listeners and the return listeners, all the supporters that I have. I see the I, I check in on the analytics. I know I I've shared before. I try to stay away from the numbers. It can drive me crazy because I am a number person. And so I try to stay away from the analytics, but it's good to take a look to see how things are doing, see how things are going. I'm experimenting with this Thursday evening time slot. Um, so yeah, so far it's doing all right. Um, but yeah, some changes to come. I'm excited. Have uh, some potential guests uh, about to pop up on the podcast. So that's fun. I started off interviewing. That's how this whole thing got started. I was just interviewing uh, new and -and up-and-coming business owners that I took interest in. And then I took a break. I went to school. And then kind of life started happening. And then the pandemic happened. And now I'm back. So it feels good to uh, get back in the swing of interviewing. I went to school for communication, studied some journalism, some PR and marketing. So it feels good to be back in the groove, you know. So stay tuned for those guests coming up. Um, and what have I been up to? I was just a part of a great event. It was a live sale with Aisha of Thrift and Tell. She's Aisha the Great on Instagram. And she went live with my client, Love Styles, Taya and Ty. Shout out to them. They keep me busy. Uh, it's a family affair. So I'm always uh, underselling and over over delivering with them. And so far, so good. So shout out to my crew. They are keeping me going absolutely love it this is the kind of stuff i live for so i'm having fun but that's what i've been up to definitely they did good got some followers up got some connections made got some sales going so you know it, it's always good when when the product is is moving right so let's hop right into today's episode today we're going to be talking about social and cultural capital social and cultural capital what does that even mean right We're going to get into that today. So y'all know I always give you the quote of the day. The quote of the day, social and cultural capital can pay for what money can't. Social and cultural capital can pay for what money can't. Now, what I mean by that is oftentimes in life, we think if we have enough money, we have enough capital, money, you know, financial capital, that we can accomplish anything we want. And... So have you ever heard the quote, uh, you're so rich that you're poor? It's almost as if people believe that money is the only means to the end. And while it is a big tool and a big part of the means to the end, obviously we're all in business for what? Number one reason. Either your number one reason is to make money and then, you know, fulfill your purpose or fulfill your purpose and then make money. Either way, money is on the list of things to do, especially in business. All right, it takes money to make money. And so a lot of people assume that money is the only thing needed in order to grow and to become, uh, you know, become what you want to be, become successful. And that's just not the case. The social and cultural capital is a very important aspect. So that's what we'll be covering today, all right? So it was a French sociologist uh, by the name of Pierre. I want to say his last name is Berdu. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Either way, 20th century thinker. um, And he was the first to have uh, been said to introduce this this idea of social and cultural capital. And what does that mean? It's almost like an intangible bank account. You can't actually cash out of this account, um, although proverbially you can. Is that a word? Proverbially? Proverbially. Either way, (laughs) it's intangible. You can't spend this kind of capital, right? This is not the, the type of green that's printed every day. This is something that you have to grow over time, okay? So what's the difference between the two? They're social and cultural. They both work together. um, And you need social capital in order to grow your culture capital, your cultural capital. All right, so let's hop right into it. What is social capital? Social capital is broken down into three different groups, right? You have your bonds, you have your bridges, and then you have your links. So think of the social capital, think of the social and cultural capital as a ladder, this is how I tend to remember. So on this ladder, there's different there's different places, there's different levels that you can be at, right? So with your social capital, 
um, there's the bonds. What are the bonds? That's the bonds like between your friends and your family and your religious groups and your ethnicity and your race. And how do you bond with other people? What do you have in common? All right. And then you have your bridges. Who are your colleagues? Who are you connected with? There might be distant friends, distant associates, uh, distant schoolmates. Um, I like to think of my, my undergrad family. I'm still in touch with a lot of people. We might not speak every day. It's my, it might have been years since I last talked to them, but when I see them, it's like time didn't pass. They're a distant associate. That's, that's that, that bridge that I have. The bond I would have would be my spouse, um, my clients right now. My sister, my brother, uh, my cousin, you know, those kind of people. Uh, I follow a lot of uh, black history, black, you know, pages that show black culture from the 70s, 80s, and the 90s. And some of them I've actually grown close with. Those would be considered my bonds, the people that I bond with. And the bridges are the people that I might not necessarily bond with on the regular, but we are still connected, okay? And then you have your links. So if you're in a social group, you might know the leader of the social group and they're at the top of that link. And then I might be towards the middle and then there might be somebody new that just joined and they're towards the bottom, but together we're all linked and we're all bonded together. And so there we begin to grow these bonds and these bridges. All right. And it's, it's on this ladder, if you will, that's your social capital. Your cultural capital needs what's produced from your social capital. So your cultural capital is broken down into another, you can say it's broken down into three more, um, three more, you know, subcategories. But the definition of cultural capital is what you've gained, the assets or the resources that promotes mobility beyond financial means. So it's the resources gained from your social capital and how you can move upward without having to really technically spend money to do so, right? Now, again, money is a tool. So you do need money in all of this. Don't get me mistaken. I'm not saying that money is not necessary for any of this. Money is needed. It's a tool and we all have to use it. It's why we get up and go to work every day. It's why there's a survival kit business. We're all looking for a better way of life, okay? So, but when we speak of the assets or the resources for cultural capital, we're talking about the bond and the bridges and the links that we can use for upward mobility. And on the back end of that, we're expecting some type of return, but we're not respect expecting the return in the beginning. We're expecting the return on the back end. We're looking to grow these relationships, grow these bonds and these bridges and these links and that's what helps us with our cultural capital, all right? So again, cultural capital can be also be broken down into three parts. There's embodied, there's objectified, and there's institutionalized. So they basically mean how they sound. Uh, embodied is the knowledge that you gain over time. So being around these, these groups, these, you know, your bonds, your bridges, your links, what knowledge have you gained over that time, okay? And then there's objectified. How do you look? These are literally the objects. That's how I remember that. Yeah, the kind of car you drive, the kind of clothes you wear, um, the kind of food you eat, the kind of places that you go. Uh, you know, you might go to the museum. You might collect artwork. You might collect cars. What are the objects that define you in this social ladder? All right. And then you have your institutionalized uh, cultural capital. That's education, certifications. I have went to Cheney University for undergrad. I went to Strayer for my master's. I'm a part of Forbes the Culture. That's a business group I'm a part of. And I'm growing in, in different areas and I'm gaining this knowledge and I'm retaining this knowledge and I'm also giving this knowledge. Um, so that's just an example of institutionalized. So think of institutions when you think of that. All right. So social capital Again, social capital is those bonds and those bridges and those links, the people that you're connected with, and they become assets or, or they can provide you with resources, all right? And your cultural capital, that's how you use that, how you use those assets and those resources to gain upward mobility 
on this social ladder that everyone is on. And whether you like it or not, you are somewhere on this social ladder. So I think it's a good idea, especially in business and especially if you're looking to grow in your nine to five. It's very important to pay attention to this this social ladder. I'm not saying you have to change who you are. I'm not saying you have to become obsessed with growing and changing. Um, but I think growth is good. I think change is good. Humans hate change. We hate growth. It doesn't because it doesn't feel good. Growth hurts. Think about when you were getting taller and you became awkward. You were knocking in the stuff. Your bones wasn't right. Like I, I had a growth spurt very, very young. So I was awkwardly bumping into everything. I played sports. I'm hurting myself because I was growing. It was growing pains. All right. So don't shy away from this. Uh, I think a lot of people shy away from that because it feels like, you know, oh, yeah, I can like get better. Uh, maybe I do think I'm better. Maybe I think I'm better than I used to be. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, the cocky person, not my favorite, but the person willing to grow and change, absolutely love it. Absolutely encourage it. Okay. So how do you grow these these accounts these social and cultural accounts it's not easy this is not something that happens overnight again these are the bonds that you've created these are the the connections that you have this is the knowledge that you've gained over time right with any account it should appreciate in value and so the same goes for your financial accounts the same should go for your social and cultural accounts okay so how do you grow your social accounts you got to get out there. You have to network. Uh, we hate we hate networking. It's not the easiest thing to do, especially when you're not a people's person. It's hard to get out there and network with people. It's hard to put yourself out there. Um, especially the older you get, we become stuck in our ways. We've experienced the PTSD in business, like I talked about on last week's episode. And so you begin to 